My name is Amber Hoyt. My name is Leslie Watkins. I am 34. I am 59 years old. February 2nd, 2012. It was in the afternoon and I wasn't feeling well and I laid down to take a nap. And I got up and I took a step with my right foot and my left leg was not coming along for the ride. I called my doctor's office and unfortunately they had just closed. I said, well, I guess I'll just go back to sleep then. And I woke him up later and I said, I, I really need to go to the bathroom, can you help me? And he had to basically from behind pick me up and drag me to the bathroom because my leg and my foot were completely gone. And by the time I was in the bathroom, my arm and my hand were gone as well. It was terrifying. I didn't know what to do. And then he helped me, drug me back to the bedroom and, and said, you know, we're, we're just gonna wait. And I said, what if I'm having a stroke? I woke up thinking, oh, it was just a bad dream. Thank God it was just a bad dream. And then I looked around and I saw my son and my husband sitting there and I said, it really wasn't a bad dream. And I pretty much lost it at that point. I was there for three and a half weeks because I had to learn how to walk. I had to learn how to do this. And thank God I can do this now because a lot of people don't get that back. And I found out in a big hurry how incredibly hard so many things are to do with one hand. Button your buttons, zip your pants, tie your shoes, put your contacts in, do your hair, cut your food up. All of that was gone. And the only way to teach yourself is to retrain your brain, to reconnect with your limbs, your fingers, all of that. And the only way to do that is repetition, repetition, repetition. Second stroke was October 10th, 2014. I was going down the hall and I turned. Well, the walker turned and I kept going. And the one thing if you ask any stroke survivor, do you fall down? Every single one I've ever asked said, yeah, I do. It's just part of the package. So I had fallen down. I was kind of stuck there and I wiggled my way into the bedroom and the phone rang. And it was my husband calling to tell me bad news about one of our neighbors. And he said to me over the phone, you don't sound right, are you okay? And I said, no. He said, do you need me to come home? I said, yes. <laughs> and so I sat and waited and he came home and came in and he said, what are you doing sitting on the floor? And I thought it came out perfectly clearly that what I just told you. I fell down, I couldn't get up, blah, blah, blah. And he said, okay, we're going to the hospital now. Because it came out gibberish. And he knew. And they explained to me very carefully that because of that, you have to make a decision. And the decision is, if you don't in fact have a clot, but you have a bleed, in your brain and we give you this shot, it may cause uncontrollable bleeding and at that point we can, there's nothing we can do to help you and you might die. And my answer to that was, give me the shot. I've done it the other way and I don't want to do it again. I had no residuals from the second stroke at all didn't get rid of the ones from the first time, but I was lucky enough to get the shot and 
it's so important to everyone to know that if you think something's wrong, be your own best advocate. April 5th of 2013. Two weeks prior is when everything began. Uh, I was having really intense headaches uh, to the point where it stopped me in my tracks. Um, very painful. They thought it was a muscle spasm. They thought it was a migraine. Uh, we tried painkillers, Vicodin. Vicodin didn't work. Um, I finally uh, decided that I needed, I needed to do something. I went um, on the 4th, Thursday, uh, to see my chiropractor. He did x-rays. Um, it looked like I was really out of whack and that I was going to need quite a few adjustments. Um, he adjusted me. It, it was, went fine. It was just very, very painful. Um, it was very painful for about, mm, I'd say maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour, but later that night, I started to feel better. On Friday, April 5th, I went for my second adjustment of what was going to be many. Um, and I remember being in the room. Um, I remember him adjusting one side and everything being fine. And then he adjusted the other side and everything went crazy. The room began to spin. Um, I could barely sit down. I didn't know, you know, what was going on. And they called um, 911, and I was actually brought here to Trinity. Um, in the ambulance, the only thing, because they did all the stroke tests, you know, the tongue, the all of that, and I passed all of that. The only thing that I do remember in the ambulance is I recognized that as I was talking, it was a lot slower than what should have been. As I'm saying things, I'm like, mm, this just isn't right. So as I got here to Trinity, they um, initially diagnosed it as a uh, migraine because there are, which I did not know this, but there are migraines that present stroke-like symptoms. In the morning, the neurologist from Trinity came in and said, your scans have shown that you've had a stroke um, and actually multiple strokes. Um, and he explained that what was happening was what, what's called an arterial dissection um, and that they were gonna need to send me to Iowa City because to take care of that dissection, um, they would have to stint and they could not do that here. They wanted to kind of wait to see what the progress was um, because the solution to the arterial dissection fixing that is the stinting and you run a risk of stroke with a stint. So a week later I returned. Um, they had saw some um, healing. So they said, we're gonna go a month now. We want you to go home. And I mean, it wasn't bed rest, but it was, you know, I was on a 10 pound um, weight restriction, which was very challenging. Um, with the weight restriction, couldn't lift my girls. The scary part was not knowing how long that was gonna be. Um, you know, it was kind of indefinite. Um, but I returned um, to Iowa City a month later and it was continuing to heal. November was my uh, six month checkup and that was when um, I went and it was completely healed, which they were kind of flabbergasted by. So that day was the day that my we restriction was lifted and um, the very first thing I did when we got home, my girls came in the door and my oldest came running up to me and I actually got to pick her up and hold her and that was just an amazing feeling. I go red for my family. I go red for my family who's been with me solidly since this happened and I go red for all the other survivors. My message to all of you is trust your gut that if you feel something's not right, you need to take care of it. Stick up for yourself. Take care of yourself. Make sure your blood pressure is under control. Make sure that your cholesterol is okay. Keep up with your doctors and do what you need to do because you may be 
saving yourself years of pain and physical therapy and disability and you may very well be saving your own life. My name is Amber and I'm a survivor. My name is Leslie and I am a survivor. Life is why. Life is why. Thank you.